In Washington state, most people don't worry about getting a little dirty when they play outside around town. But did you ever stop to think about what could actually be found within the soil? Well, if you live in King or Pierce counties, dirt is something you should be very aware of and could contain both arsenic and lead. Well, from 1912 to 1985, the American Smelting and Refining Company, known as ASARCO, operated a copper smelter in North Tacoma. This facility processed ores that were high in arsenic. As a result of the smelting process, air pollution from the smokestacks settled on the surface soil throughout areas of King, Pierce, and Thurston counties. Arsenic, lead, and other heavy metals can still be found in the soil as a result of this pollution. And it binds with the topsoil, and it's there yet today, even though the smelter is removed and the, and the uh, smelter stack is down, the arsenic and lead is still in the soil. And so it doesn't go away. Um, it doesn't get driven down by water. It's technically chemically bound to the soil now. We find arsenic at very high concentrations from anywhere from the top six inches of the soil, even down below 18 inches of soil. The way we get uh, the heavy metals, arsenic and lead, into our bodies is specifically through ingestion. It's dangerous because if people are working in their yard or kids are out playing in their yard, uh, they could inhale the, the dust from the arsenic and lead in the soil. As arsenic has been shown to cause certain kind of cancers. Uh, it also contributes to heart disease, uh, diabetes, and lead, again, specifically for children, uh, causing developmental delays. So any way we can minimize their environmental health issues from further adding contaminants into our bodies is very important. Now the good news. In 2009, the state of Washington received a settlement from a SARCO, and a large part of the $94 million is being used to pay for cleanup of residential properties. If your home is within the service area of the program, you might qualify too. So the yard cleanup program um, is where we go out and we sample your yard for arsenic and lead and if we find levels above certain criteria then we'll clean up the yard and remove the contaminated soil and replace it with clean soil. So Department of Ecology will contact you. Uh, we're working neighborhood by neighborhood to clean up yards and when we reach your neighborhood we will send you a letter to let you know that you qualify. So we ask that you uh, send back a form letting us know if you're interested. Because we can't tell if your soil is contaminated or not by just looking at it. We have to actually take samples and we're not cleaning up all contamination. We're only cleaning up those with the highest levels. So there's people out there that don't have 100 parts per million for arsenic or 500 parts per million for lead. And they're just maybe slightly below that. But we can increase your knowledge level so that you know that it might be out there and you know how to, how to protect yourself. My plan after the completion will be to start a nice sized family garden and being able to share some of that produce without it weighing on my conscience because I might be giving somebody a, a, an extra dose of arsenic. Well, since I have Evelyn here, um, <laughs> um, and uh, we know that she's pretty quickly going to be crawling around in the yard and playing and so we wanted to make sure that the yard was safe for her to, to be in and free of all the arsenic and lead and all that stuff. Any of the residents who are thinking about this leap in and do it because it's great for them and it's great for the environment and it's free. It's a, it's a way to get your yard completely redone for free. You don't, you don't pay a thing. There's a little bit of inconvenience um, but other than that we're going to have a completely new, an all-new yard. It was fascinating to watch, and I thought it was a great example of the government doing what a government is supposed to do, taking care of the citizens. Again, the program is free and voluntary. But if you decline the program now, you cannot join the program later. So let's say you decide to move ahead with the yard program. Let's talk to our professionals about the initial process of meeting and planning for cleanup. Uh, a draft cleanup plan is uh, basically a layout of the construction that we're going to do on a resident's property. The cleanup plans I create are based on measurements taken in the field. We will actually measure out the dimensions of the house and the layout of the house relative to the property limits to get the layout of, of landscaping and, and shrubbery. We basically return the property back to its original conditions, but we'd like you to help us make those decisions. You can decide if there are certain areas of your yard that you do not want cleaned up for whatever reason. And then as far as with the plants and the landscaping, we can pretty much restore ground cover as it originally was. Areas that are excluded from cleanup include 
under substantial shrubs next to trees and critical root zones. Steep slopes, drain fields, forested areas. From the time we meet with you, you can expect that cleanup will happen. The actual construction work will happen about a year later. As you can imagine, there are many steps to the planning process. They have to put together the cleanup plan, get the proper permits, and hire the contractor. This could all take several months to a year after the first meeting. Once they reach your yard, replacing the lawn and soil can take several weeks. It may take 60 days or more for the lawn to fully establish.